Welcome back to the Sovereign Ratio. Today we're going to do a full market update on Bitcoin and altcoins and everything that's happened in the last couple of weeks. I want to apologize right off the front here that I haven't made a video in a couple of weeks. I've had some medical and other issues come up that I've had to deal with. I haven't been able to make videos, but now I'm back and ready to do so. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button, the like button, and leave me a comment below. So here we are. It's the week of the halving. It's the event that myself and most other people in cryptocurrency have been looking forward to for the last three and a half years. And we're finally here, right? It's an exciting time. We've seen a monumental jump in Bitcoin price all the way down from 15.5 up to about $74,000. And here we are looking at the Pi Cycle Indicator. If you've been watching this channel for any length of time, you understand that the Pi Cycle Indicator is now what I'm looking at for a full-blown bull market. That BTC high, long moving average, which is indicated in white on the chart, is really the key to the big move up in the, in the bull market. I truly don't believe that any news event is the cause of price action. I think that price action is justified by the news. And that's the way that I look at the market and the psychology of the market, because in general, what we're looking at here with all these green and red candles is just the psychology of people in general and what kind of emotional decision making is happening at the time. Now, obviously, the world is in a not great place right now with the conflict in Israel and Iran. But to me, that is the justification for what the chart is doing. And if you trade that way and look that way, I think that will ultimately make you better and more successful as an investor. On this very broad view weekly chart, you can see that Bitcoin has retraced approximately 18% from its high of $74,000, currently sitting at $63,827, with a low of right around 60K basically on this Kraken chart that I have pulled up here. Again, we're in the week of the halving. And what I want to note right off the bat is that about a year ago, when I made my first YouTube video on this channel, I'm, the very first video I made was in comparison to the 2016 cycle, right? So if we go back and look at that, you can see that the major correction that occurred off the Pi cycle high long moving average occurred just before the halving, very, very close to the halving, right? And it corrected to the tune of approximately 38%. And altcoins, what, what altcoins existed back in the time would have probably corrected around 1.6 times whatever the correction was in Bitcoin. So 38% correction in Bitcoin, that would be approximately 57, 67% in altcoins. Now, if we go to current times, we see that the same thing is playing out just a couple of weeks delayed, but we've only done a 17% correction. If we did a similar correction back to 2016, say 30% or so, that would put Bitcoin around $51,000. And there's a lot of confluence with Bitcoin around that area, right? In my previous video that I made, I said my worst case scenario was around $51,000, $52,000. Well, since that time, these long and short moving averages have changed. And the BTC high short moving average is currently sitting around 55K. And the BTC low short EMA is currently sitting at 53.3K. If we add the Gaussian channel into that, you can see that the Gaussian channel on the weekly chart is way down there, but on the daily chart, the Gaussian channel sits between 66K and 57K. So for me, adding those two things together, you've got an area here between 57 and 55K that is of interest. I'm not saying that Bitcoin is gonna go there, but what I am saying is that there's been some manipulation going on right now. If you look at this right here, you can see that Bitcoin was obviously in kind of a bull pennant right if we kind of adjust this to look like that you can see that bitcoin went above the bull pennant and then jumped back into it and then went below the bull pennant and is now trying to go back into it the other direction what this is is a shakeout what the ultimate direction of the market is i don't know you don't know nobody really knows but a bull pennant generally breaks to the upside so i would imagine that most people right now think that bitcoin is going to break to the upside out of this bull pennant now People with a lot of Bitcoin, market makers, rich people, they're probably going to do everything they can to shake everybody out of the market before price ultimately makes a decision. So that's why you're seeing this right now. You're seeing a breakup and a breakdown and then back in. It's meant to fool you and what you need to do right now. I don't like this term, but I'm going to use the term as hodl. If you're already fully invested in the market, I think that hodling is a great idea. If you're not fully invested in the market, I do think that you are on the verge of missing a major opportunity and we're gonna look at altcoins to explore why I think that is. 
as I stated in my last video, the Bitcoin cost of production is also a very important metric to look at. This red bar here indicates the amount of power dollars used to create and mine Bitcoin by miners. If we look at the range, it's anywhere from 50,000 to the floor price currently sitting at $30,000, meaning that currently the lowest price that a Bitcoin could be mined for is 30K. Here in a couple of days, when the halving occurs, that's going to double to 60K. Now, what significance does that have? Well, if we scroll back in the chart, there are very few times where Bitcoin has ever gone below the cost of production, at least the bottom red line here. If we just trace it back and trace it back, you can see that right here in November of 2022, Bitcoin popped below it for just a couple of days on a couple of different occasions, but basically held that price for the entire bear market that we just came out of. If we keep scrolling back a little bit further, you can see that back here during the COVID dump, it actually popped below it. It was sitting at $4,800. Bitcoin popped down to $3,800 temporarily for one day and then popped right back up into the low cost of production metric. If we keep going back further, you can see there are some other times where Bitcoin came very close. It looks like back here in November of 2018, it did the same thing. It popped below it for just a day and then popped right back up and held that as support. But there is one area here I want to point out. So five months, Bitcoin was actually right at or below the cost of production. Now, ultimately, it did hold that and it kind of served the support of sorts. But this is the one instance in the history of Bitcoin where this does not hold true. And Bitcoin actually did go below the cost of production. So while that is very rare in the history of Bitcoin, it is obviously possible. And if we scroll back to today, you can see that again, Bitcoin's gonna be at 60K. That doesn't mean that it's gonna stay there after the halving. Bitcoin could pop down, you know, what's 25% lower than 60K? Let's take a look at that, because the cost of production is gonna be right here. 25% below that, which was the most drawdown that we saw, puts Bitcoin at $44,600. Now, I'm not saying it's gonna go there, but I'm saying based off of historical data, I mean, it's potential that it could, but in general, Bitcoin does hold this bottom of the production cost very, very well. So for me, I think it's a little bit foolish to plan on Bitcoin ever going below 60K after the halving, even though there's a potential that it could, right? Because we've obviously identified this area of interest here at the Golden Pocket between 48K, 50K, 52K, like this $4,000 range right here is of interest. And I'm not saying that it's not possible that Bitcoin goes and tests that again. So one other coin we're going to look at right now is one of my favorites for this bull run and I think is something that everybody should consider adding to their portfolio. I actually did a separate video on this altcoin about three, four months ago, I think it was. And here's why I think that altcoins are at a major buy opportunity right now. I'm not saying that they're at their total bottom, but what I'm saying is that you're getting a significant discount on most altcoins right now. But this one in particular is Tau. This entire weekly candle has a difference of 47%. Now, most altcoins that I've looked at in the last couple of days with this drop that we've had in the entire market, most have moved somewhere between 55 and 60% to the downside. Tau has only moved 47% to the downside. And I'm gonna show you a way that you can kind of look at these altcoins and determine which ones are probably gonna be the most strong in the bull run because of buying interest in these times like this. So if we take our Fibonacci tool, and we run it from the bottom here all the way to this top, you can see that there are several levels. What I do when I go to set limit orders is I look at the 382 and I draw a box. And then I look at the 0.5 right here and I draw a box. And then I look at the golden pocket right here and I draw another box. For me, those are the three places that I set limit orders. If you look at Tau, you can see that it's past the first box. So obviously I had an order kick off at that price level. It got to the second box. And what's really funny about this is I can kind of finagle it a little bit. That's the chart that I was looking at. And it says $409.35. This is why precise Fibonacci's are so important because I set a limit order at $411 on this token and it wicked down to $411.01. If I go over that candle, you can see right there, $411.01. If you look at the top bar, it says open, high, low, and close, $411.01. I missed my limit order on Tau by one cent. And since then, it's rebounded from $411 to $576. That is the importance of limit orders, and that's also the importance of seeing coins that have a lot of buying interest. 
And this is one of those coins that I think you're going to very much regret if you don't add to your portfolio. Obviously not financial advice, but that's kind of the way to look at altcoins right now. Obviously, with this little 17, 18% correction in Bitcoin, altcoins have done significantly more correction, actually more than normal. Whenever we would see Bitcoin correct around 18% or so, what I would do is I would take 18 times 1.6 and expect that altcoins would correct somewhere in the neighborhood of 29, 30%. That has not happened. Altcoins have corrected between 55 and 60% already. A good example of this, we can look at three tokens that are actually going to merge soon. One of them is Ajax. If we pull that up here, you can see that Ajax has corrected 58%. And then if we pull up the second token, which is FET, Fetch AI, get that here. Fetch AI has corrected 53%. And then if we pull up Ocean, Ocean has corrected 62%. Those tokens are soon going to all three merge into a new token called ASI, which is a major artificial intelligence play, a conglomerate, you might say. But you can see that anywhere between 53 and 62 percent is kind of like the average right now. Whenever you see a token like Tau that's only corrected 47 percent or some other token, let's uh, grab another example here. Here's another good one. ICP. ICP was at a valuation of twenty one dollars and corrected down to eleven dollars. That's only a 47 percent drop. When you see things like this that are performing very well, and I wouldn't say very well because 47% is a huge correction, right? But when you see tokens that are not correcting as much as other tokens in the same niche, that's probably the ones you want to look at for strong contenders in the next bull run. Another chart that I've talked about many times on this channel in previous videos is total three minus USDT divided by Bitcoin. And generally, if we look at the weekly chart, what has happened in the past, which really I can't call this a trend because we don't have enough data to go back and have multiple touch points. But at least in the last cycle, we can see that this chart actually wicked down to the 0.25 area and even below that on one occasion to the 0.19 area. This is when altcoins were at a great buy. So you could maybe DCA here, DCA here, DCA here. But what I've been waiting for for altcoin entries was this chart to go back to the 0.25 area. At this point, we're so close to the halving that I don't know that that's going to happen. Perhaps there's just a renewed strength in altcoins that's going to surpass what it was in the previous cycle. And maybe altcoin valuations in comparison to Bitcoin don't go down as low as they have in the past. I don't know, but we're very, very close to the halving and we have not seen that move down yet. We've actually seen a lot of support here at the 0 0.39, 0 0.4 area. Even with this dump that we had over the last couple of days, we still saw strong support here at 0.4. The reason that I started to allocate funds into altcoins right now is just because of the percentage drop, right? Like again, I've got Ajax pulled up just an example. A 60% drop on an altcoin, that's a huge discount. This altcoin could go back down to 37 cents for all I know. But what I know is that whenever this merges and becomes the ASI token, chances are it's going to be a very strong contender and have multiple X's in the bull cycle. Now, we don't know yet if that bull cycle is going to end at the end of 2024 and be like a left translated cycle, or if we're going to move into 2025 and have a regular length bull run peak like in late 2025. But that being said, buying coins at a 60% discount, while you could have more downside in the very short term, I think is an excellent buy point to make sure that you're in those markets and you're getting filled. If you're looking for altcoin picks, I would invite you to go back and look at the content that I created in the middle of last year. I did basically an entire series that all starts with why you should consider adding X token to your altcoin bag right and i went through a lot of tokens i started with my favorite altcoin which i think is the best altcoin in the entire crypto space that's Chainlink, and then i moved on to filecoin vulcan forged illuvium the graph xrp so on and so forth and i think i did some others here that might be of interest i did stacks render gala games polygon and wilder world now one i want to focus on just for a split second is wilder world since i've done this video just in the last couple of weeks because i did this video back in july of 2023 in the last couple of weeks wilder world has announced a partnership with samsung for me, that screams that there's probably going to be something big coming for Wilder World. There are a lot of people that are on the Wilder World bandwagon like I am. There are some people that think it sucks and it's just overhyped graphics. I'm telling you, a partnership with Samsung means great things for Wilder World. And I think in general, I've done a very good job back in this series. If you would have bought all of these tokens back whenever I made the videos on them, 
you would be up many, 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 many X's right now. So if you, and I think you're gonna get many more X's out of them. But if you're interested, go back and check out the series that I've made. They all start with the same topic, why you should consider adding whatever to your altcoin bag. So I think I've given a lot of information today. What I wanna say is normally I would pull up momentum oscillators and look at RSIs and stock RSIs and ultimate stock RSIs, but I don't really think this is the time for that with a potential war in the background and major correction off the Pi cycle indicator and the halving coming up. I don't know that momentum oscillators are really gonna get us anything. I could easily just double click here and show you that it's got a major bearish divergence on the ultimate. The RSI is not pulled down very much, but I'm not gonna go into that today. Right now, I think the most important thing to watch is what's going to happen tomorrow on Monday when markets open to see how the market reacts to all of this potential news over in Iran and Israel. That's going to be the most important factor to determine what direction the market's going to take, along with a fake out on this bull flag that we kind of drew earlier. Again, this is a different chart, but watching what the result of this bull flag is to see if there's a definitive retest of this bottom line and then a breakdown or a reclaim of this top line and a breakup. If you're new here, please hit the subscribe button, the like button, leave me a comment below. We will see you in the next video and safe trading.